Hey everybody, Aaron from the Ball Pit here, back with another episode of Titan Quest. Uh, it's been a while, it's been a minute since I posted a video, and it's because I decided I was done with this whole lavalier mic nonsense, and instead I um, spent the money to buy another Yeti. Um, and so I'm still kind of workshopping exactly how I want this setup to be. I think I am going to move stuff around. But now that everything's set up like this, even though I don't like it, I still figure, let me record a video with it just to get something out for the people back home. So that is what is happening right now. These guys are going to kill me if I'm not careful, so... Sometimes you, you have no more yapping room. too much. And bro, the video just started and I have to go back. Oh my god. You know what? We're going back to Megara. It's been a long time. We're going back. Why not? Why not? That's what I say. Why not? Yeah. So everything's kind of reversed right now. Like my mic's on my left. And my second monitor's on my right. And I kind of want that switched because I don't Sword like it. So that's what we're going to do. Also, I kind of really hate my, um, my earbuds right now. Um, they're not very good quality, and I think I'm going to change that and get, spend, I don't see, I know that all the, uh, all these other YouTubers and stuff have the, um, what you call it? Uh, like a headset, like a physical headset, but I don't... I don't know. I just don't love the idea of a headset. I know everybody else has it, and it's probably, like, good, but... I just don't know how I feel, you know? Whoa, I can't put on this armor now? I think that's what I want, right? Oh, I can't wear it, because I forgot this gives me strength, and then I can't wear it when I have that on. Makes sense. This mystic sh shield is better. Yeah, alright. Mystic Shield is better, so we'll sell that. And then let's go to the Relic Vault. We need to get rid of this, too. Um, Essence of Shenong's Dark Medicine. Do I have that anywhere? I don't think I do. Um, do I have Monkey King's Trickery? or grace trickery or grace i don't think i have either okay and then do i have demon's blood i feel like i should yeah i do uh yeti fur yep uh saber claw i think there's saber claw raptor tooth i don't think i have raptor tooth no that's bat fang what are you no that's lupine claw and then pen pen claw i don't think i have that either Okay, cool. Uh, and then I can go to my internet. I can auto sort and then go back. Necklace there. Monkey King's trickery there. Grace is there. We have this completed, which is lightning resistance and energy. We also have demon's blood completed, which gives vitality damage resistance, stun resistance, and defensive ability. Yeti furs, cold damage, and cold resistance, as well as defensive ability. And then these are all incomplete charms. Yeah, there. Travels. And then we go back up. This we person. Boom. Boom. Let's hold in. Keep going. So how's everybody been? It's been a it's been a while. What has gone on? Oh, I guess today, this might date this video a bit. Today, or was it last night? Like late last night? I don't remember. But the one guy, Liam, I think, from one direction uh died and you know, trigger warning for suicide, but he allegedly was in, like, a fugue state or possibly, like, a drug-induced state, and I, I think it was crack, actually. I think it was crack. So he was in a crack cocaine-induced state and jumped off the balcony of his hotel room, um, which is just insanity. It's just insanity, and, like, you know, I'm not a big One Direction fan, if that's not apparent from, like, listening to me talk. Um, the fact that I'm not, like, a 24-year-old woman. But, um, you know, nevertheless, not a One Direction fan by any means. But it is sad to watch, like, you know, in this instance, life be so 
needlessly wasted. Like, you know, he's, he was a younger guy. He had so much time. Even if he was older, you know, he had so much time. He had people that loved him and cared about him. And, you know, to be, to just have that kind of thing happen, especially when you're not coherent and conscious and sober, to, like, actually be consciously making that decision and thinking it through is really just tragic, you know? I feel like, you know, in the history of art and music, you know, greater art, um, it feels like drugs is a common, you know, device that ends up taking artists away way younger than they would naturally pass. Um, you know, I mean, think about it with all the rappers recently, like recently, quote unquote, like Lil Peep and Juice World and who else died from drugs? X died from violence, died from violence. I mean, like, you know, think about Jimi Hendrix and just all these people that die from drugs uh, and overdose and stuff like that. And it's really just, it's really just sad. Um, and I think one of the saddest parts about it is that we recognize that this is happening, but we don't do anything about it. And, you know, the only thing we do, when we do something about it, all we do about it is we see somebody like that, and we're like, they're degenerate, and they need to be locked up for their own good. And it's like, do you really think going to prison is going to help this person, or jail is going to help this person with their sobriety? There's probably, it's probably easier to get drugs in jail than it is to get it outside of jail, to be completely honest with you. Because how many drugs are in prisons? Like, this is not a reasonable solution. All you're doing in this state, in this example um, of sending an addict or somebody that struggles with um, drug use to jail, all you're doing is getting them out of the public's eye, right? Instead of actually working on the issue at hand and solving it, you're attempting to just put a band-aid over it, right? Instead of taking the time to stitch it up. Sorry, I cut the roof of my mouth, so I have a bit of a lisp right now, which is kind of weird. Instead of taking the time to actually solve the problem and everything like that, you just, you know, get it out of everybody's attention and put a band-aid over it and say, you know what, this will be somebody else's problem later down the line when this person gets out and then they go back. You know, you're just stuffing, you're stuffing the prisons, which is not good. That's not what you want to do. You want... You know, that's allegedly not what you want to do. What you should want to do instead is give these people the care and the love and the support and the resources to get better. Go Have them go to grief counseling and, you know, therapy of different kinds to work through the trauma of why they started using in the first place. And then work with them on finding better coping habits. Because a lot of time this drug and alcohol abuse is a, their version of a coping mechanism. So if they're able to... Oh my god, what the fuck? What are these guys? Yaren? What type of fucking... What the hell's going on? Alright, anyways. Instead of... Oh my god. Um, yeah, instead of them using substance... As a coping mechanism, they can learn healthier, better uses of their time and energy to cope. Um, and ultimately, that will be what saves lives, not just throwing people in prison incessantly uh, for drug use. But that would actually take um, people in power having proactive thought and empathy and care for their constituents, which we know is a big ask. A big ask for a lot of these politicians. So, you know what? You do what you must. You do what you can, and you do what you must. But yeah, that's kind of my whole thing on it. Um, what else has happened recently? The NBA is starting up again soon. I don't know if I have any NBA fans here. Oh my god, we're at the Great Wall? What the fuck? Alright, I think we have more to cover before we go into the Great Wall. Great, great spot. Um, the Great Wall. I said great spot, like any of you watching know what I'm talking about. Um, there's a restaurant near me. Oh my god, what? Oh shit, that sells, it's a Chinese restaurant, and it's called The Great Wall, and it's really, makes really fucking good Chinese food. 
Oh, that kid's just skipping now. He's like, ding dong, the raptor's dead, the raptor's dead, the raptor's dead, ding dong, the wicked raptor's dead. My daughter. <laughs> uh huh. Alive. Yep, you're welcome. You. You saved my daughter. Bless you. You saved my I'm the best. You are very welcome. what I get? A protective amulet? Oh, it's kind of trash. Shouldn't save the daughter. Waste of time. Waste of arm energy by swinging my mace. I have to swing my sword, 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 my diamond sword, sword, sword. You guys remember Tobuscus? I used to love that guy when I was a, a, like a young lad watching YouTube. Tobuscus was one of my favorites, and it sucks. So he had, he stopped making stuff because there was like allegations of like rape or sexual assault. Sorry, trigger warning. Of like sexual assault or something from him. But I don't remember it actually being confirmed if he did it or not. If I remember correctly, it's just allegations. And then I don't know if it was confirmed or not. I never, like, followed up on that to see if it was or not. I just remember there was allegations and he made a couple videos of him, like, crying and really upset. Which makes sense whether he did it or not, <laughs> to be honest. And then I never remember really seeing anything from him other than like occasional little occasional videos I think would come across my feed. Like and only if I was going back to watch his old videos, which I didn't do very often. Or I think I, the big the most amount of times I'd see him is somebody on Twitter uh, trying to engagement bait and being like, Do you guys remember this YouTuber? and posting like a clip or a picture of Tobuscus. Like, yes, we fucking remember this YouTuber. Oh shit. Oh shit. Oh shit. There we go. That's nice. Oh god, why? I was so close. I was so close. Ugh. But yeah. Um, yeah, I used to like his videos. But like looking back on it now, it was it was obviously childish. It's childish content and childish humor, and that's what he, he built it around, you know? It was like loud and obnoxious and that kind of thing, which that's you know, that's funny to children. That kind of humor. That's really not what, uh... That's really not my style anymore, if you can't tell. Because I don't really ever yell. <laughs> I don't know. And nowadays, I'm not as big on the yelling. I'm kind of just like a more calm, cool, and collected style of content. Um, And probably because I'm now an adult. And yelling and screaming about shit doesn't really, uh intrigue me as much anymore it's not as funny for whatever reason as a kid yelling and being obnoxious is just funny and i think it's because society dictates that's not what you're supposed to do right so the very fact that in society you're supposed to like be quiet and respectful um of other people and stuff you know that's what your parents teach you and that's what you know society kind of um like reinforces in people I think that when that happens and then you are watching YouTube videos and there's somebody who's doing the opposite of that, you're kind of like, oh, that's cool because he's going against the grain. I think there's naturally in humans a bit of like a natural resistance to authority and rules um, that can kind of happen, especially in adolescence. Um, and so because of that, when you see somebody who kind of does that, you're, like, intrigued. You're like, oh, that guy's cool because he's going against the grain. He's going against the authority. I think there is something to be said about that, like, kind of naturally occurring in people. Uh, and so because of that, I think people like Tobuscus or Early Smosh or, uh like KSI and Logan Paul and even like Mr. Beast like this kind of like in your face obnoxious loud people not Mr. Beast I don't think he's like that I think that intrigues a lot of children because of the fact that it's against what they're told how they how they are told to act when they're in school and where the, when they're at the dinner table and when they're at church and when they're you know in the library and in the grocery store and stuff like that right 
And so they're told by these parents all the time that don't do that, don't do that, don't do this, don't do that. And then when they see an adult creator do that, they're like, oh, this guy's cool. He does what I want to do, and he can get away with it because he's an adult. Um, so I think there was a bit of that there. I think there was a bit of that there. Also, you know, kids naturally, especially nowadays with the popularization of both like things like TikTok and Instagram Reels and Vine and YouTube Shorts and whatever else, that create these really uh, popularization of these like really quick short form video styles. I think that also adds a bit to that style of content because everything is supposed to be quick and fast and in your face because that's how you get attention. That's how you keep people around. Whereas when I started on YouTube, um, while there was early Smosh and stuff like that, which was like kind of probably like the first the first real brain rot I can really remember being exposed to on the internet. Like, I watched a lot of gaming content when I was younger, and a lot of that was Let's Play style. I'm talking The Rad Brad. Um, I'm talking Mathis Games. I'm talking even gaming reviews from people like Splattercat, uh, watching Markiplier play, and Jacksepticeye. Um... And even, even um, some of those earlier Minecrafters, like Captain Sparkles and Yogscraft. Um, oh, Yogscast, not Yogscraft. Uh, Finbar Hawks. Those type of people that were like really important gaming creators to me when I was growing up. And they had this slower, let's play style of content that I really liked because it felt like you got to know them more, right? because it feels like when people are very loud, obnoxious, in your face, and there's a lot of cuts and stuff like that, like a Mr. Beast video, for example, you don't really get to see who Jimmy, is his last name Levine or something? I don't know. Who Mr. Beast is. You don't get to know him, because the whole time he's putting on a show, right? He's putting on a show for you. It's like an actor. You know, when you watch Spider-Man, you don't know the real Andrew Garfield. That's my Spider-Man, by the way. If you know, if you watch Barbie, you you don't know the real Margot Robbie. You don't know the real Ryan Gosling because they're acting, right? And so the point of that is, when you watch these these type of YouTube videos, that are higher quality production and all the cuts and stuff like that, very short paced. You don't get to know the real creators. This is them Hail acting Trevor. or putting on a show. Before right. you lies the great wall that shields our land from barbarian hordes. It has never failed us before. But yesterday, before dawn, bro, they an broke the Great Wall of China. Even the Mongol the horde couldn't do that. We have seen these beasts before. But not in the worst uh -huh. of the monster plague had passed, we thought. The monstrous yes. horde came upon us. Wow. Our watchmen say they saw a yep. fearsome. We have not, we have not yet. All right. Oh, look. Rebirth Fountain. We'll go back that way then. Can I go this way at all? Nope. Looks like we have to go that way. We're probably going to end it here, but we're going to talk to uh, Zichan first. Our orders are to clear uh -huh. the wall. But these pang aren't making yes, it a giant one is taken up by the guard tower over there. The men the won't fight it. At least that's way for reinforcements. We thought our uh -huh. walls were. It's bigger and stronger than ten peng. It picked the commander. Okay. We'll be waiting for. We don't dare go. We don't dare go on. Mm. You know what? My first episode back in a while. Let's go fight it. Fuck it. Let's do this. It, there's not too many places to run. So you know what? Uh, this shouldn't be too long, I don't think. There's not that many places to explore. This really starts to get long. The things that make these episodes long is when there's a million different places to go and explore, because then I have to run through them all, and when I have to go and sell um, gear. Yeah, it takes a long time. And if I die, so let's not do that. But, yeah, so hopefully if, if I don't die and I don't need to sell gear because I sold it in the beginning of the episode, we should be all right. Oh, there it is. No, Sasha, no! Uh-oh.
Oh, it took away all my buffs. All right, we almost got it. Nice. Get fucked. Nice. We like those. We like those. Sasha died once, but it's alright because I stayed alive to make sure that our fight continued. See? Y'all can't say that Sasha carries me anymore because I carried Sasha. Ha <laughs> ha. You, you yep. beat the giant's pen? Yep. It brushed off a dozen of us. Please, take me as your student. No. Tell me, please. Clearly, you are a great hero. I didn't get anything from that. Mm, I gotta walk it down to this guy. However, I do get a magical weapon, and that, my friends, is very intriguing. I would very much like to, very much, like to know what this um, magical weapon is. Majestic chest? That's what I say when I see your mother. Uh -huh. <laughs> Never gets old. Never gets old. Um, what was I saying before? Yeah, but you don't get to actually know these creators, right? You just get to know their character, their acted form. And I don't like that, you know? I think if you want to watch character actors perform, you should watch film. I w like watching YouTube creators or Twitch creators or live streamers or whatever you want to say. I like watching them because, you know, we're going to stop here. Because you get to know the real them in conclusion. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Titan Quest. And I hope to see you all later. Goodbye now.